Craig Jackson says that he was waiting on a food delivery late Saturday night when he heard a knock on his door. I was sitting right here in my chair. I heard a loud bang on the door, bam, 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 bam. I guess uh, she, uh, I said, who is it? She said, could you help me? I've been shot. Her family says it was Janetrius Moore. She had been shot by Malik Halfacre. She said her baby daddy shot her uh, and he shot her. He shot her, her mother and the kids. She said she was the only person who, uh, who got away. While they waited for help to arrive, Jackson tried to keep more conscious by talking to her. I said, uh, why did he shoot you? And has that words stem this money? He was in disbelief that Half Acre would kill four people and injure another over a stimulus check. His exact words were, I'm the only one who got away. He killed the rest of them. That was his exact words. The people killed in the shooting have been identified as Anthony Johnson, Daquan Moore, Eve Moore, and Tamika Brown. Moore told Jackson after the shooting, Half Acre was chasing her. She was, she was frantic. She was, he was hysterical. She was, she was in pain. Jackson said a pickup truck drove around the block slowly three times while they were waiting, but he couldn't see who was inside. She kept on saying, please help me, please help me, please help me. And I told her, I said, uh, the, uh, the police are on the way, the police are on the way. Battered by violence, a young woman's boyfriend now charged with killing her and her mother. Her brother was also hurt but survived, telling John Sherrick his sister was trying to get away from her boyfriend when he opened fire. A mother trying to protect her children with her life. She wasn't kidding when she said she'd die for her children. Sunday night, Danielle Sims used her body as a shield, trying to save her 22-year-old daughter, Crystal Williams, and 18-year-old son, Malachi Williams. That's what Malachi told me on the phone. He said his sister, Crystal, was arguing with her live-in boyfriend, 23-year-old Justin Dion Turner, and she was trying to get away from him to go home with her mother. And as Crystal and the family were driving out of the apartment complex. Malachi said Turner blocked them with his car. And out of nowhere, Justin cuts us off and comes out with a gun. And he pulls Crystal out at gunpoint. My mom gets outside. And my mom is over her using herself as a shield for my sister. And he was point blank. Like, he was right there and he just shot. Boom, boom, boom. And then all of a sudden, I guess he just pointed it at me. He just wanted me dead. I don't know how he missed. Malachi was wounded. Turner drove away. Dunwoody police arrested Turner Monday. Jail records show Turner was arrested this past April, charged with aggravated assault against a police officer, and was released a few days later. No indication yet what the status of that case is. Malachi Williams speaks of how his sister Crystal had tried to get away from Turner before and could not. He described her as the family's light. My sister was the funny one. She was just the life of everything. I'm, I'm angry and sad. I've never felt that type of combo before. And it, it's, it's, it's immense anger and sadness. Just, I'll never forgive him ever in my life. Shalwam Akim Wa Akwath Wa Mash Paka. This is Pastor Jerry Carter III. Uh, I was coming to you on today in this podcast to uh, bring some things to remembrance as well as also um, give us some direction when dealing with certain situations that are taking place in this hour as we deal with the hands of the wicked especially among the house of Israel uh, let's bless our Allah at this time Barakatha Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai Hamash Yach Wa Rawaha Kwadash, the water Raba, Yahweh thank you for allowing us to come together one more time and worship you in the beauty of holiness. We ask you that you go in the midst of the families that has been destroyed and discomforted uh, by the works of this beast system and by the works of the enemy. And as they are suffering the loss of loved ones, they're suffering the illnesses and diseases and all kinds of perils at this time. We ask you that you let Rawak HaKwadash, the Comforter, Shalom, be in the midst of them. We ask you to be in everything that we do and say, let your name be exalted. These and all the blessings we ask, Baha Shem Yahweh, Wah Yahweh Shai, Hamash Yah, Wah, Rawak HaKwadash, the Water Rabah, Shalom. Let's go into our topic at this time. The Order of Melchizedek exposes the imaginations of man's consciousness and two worlds 
Ha Dabarathia Malakya Tazadakwa Gala Ha Ila Yatazar Adam Mashkayalyam Wa Shanya Tha Balwath. This is part six. Shemak Shabbat Shalawan. Let's see what thus says Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. As we're in this segment, part six, we're going to discuss our consciousness in this world and the world, the other world, um, the world to come, whether it be good or evil. The imagination of men has given us misinformation about departing from this present world. As of today, I encourage all of you to ask questions about these serious matters. This serious matter specifically was going on when Negroes, Hebrew Israelites, all right, are murdering their own baby mamas, their wives, their, you know, brothers and sisters, mothers and aunts and all, you know, what's going on here? I want you to know what's going on. The works in the realm of the spirit, whereas death and the departing from this present world has been called paranormal activity. But you've seen it acting out in real life. You see, remove yourself from entertaining wicked spirits. Remove yourself from entertaining <laughs> the entertainment aspect and look at what's really going on, people. Let's study that part. After the wicked ones are cut off, there are instant consequences. The price for evil must be paid in full. Hashatan is not our friend. Our accuser could never be our friend. So therefore, there are some that are full of the spirit of Hashatan. They will never be your friend. They'll act like and prostrate and carry on with that behavior. They'll never be your friend. Now today, we're dealing with two aspects. One is passing away. The other is to be cut off. Okay? So to pass away is to transition from this life as we know it. No longer exist in this space called life. Removed from this present world into eternal rest or eternal torment. There is no in between. There's no working it out in purgatory. The word pass away, ancient Hebrew word is Gaza. To transition from one part of life into the next part is called Gaza. And you see here on the screen in ancient Hebrew is Ga and Za. And then ancient Gaz is Ga and Za. Those of you who like the ancient Hebrew, you can write it in as well, right along with me. So Gaza. Is Ga and Za. Ga Za. Con? All right. Let's go to the next part. That means to be cut off or to transition or to go through the process. And let's see what the process is. The word trans transition is defined in the Oxford Dictionary as the process or a period of changing from one state or condition to another the process by which a person permanently adopts the outward or physical characteristics of the gender with which they identify as opposed to the or those associated with their birth sex the process may or may not involve measures such as hormone therapy and gender reassignment surgery a change of the atom nucleus electron etc from one quantum state to another with emission or absorption of radiation undergo or cause to undergo a process or period of transition adopt permanently the outward or physical characteristics of the gender one identifies with as opposed to those associated with one's birth sex the origin of the word is late middle english okay and the grammatical term is transitivity transitivity or to transire, or in the Latin, it means to go across. To go across. That is the reason why they're called, in that world, they're called cross dressers. They're called crossover, or you're trying to trans 
cross over from one gender to another and that is a wicked thing to do so when they try to transition or cross over from one gender to the next gender these people some 75 to 80 percent of them they typically go into a mental state of suicidal thoughts and or commit suicide and or desire to be put back into their birth sex or their birth gender uh, so don't even bother wasting your time and money trying to do that um, and, and and this transition is also referenced when we're dealing with uh, when we're dealing with people that pass away when they take their last breaths or when they complete their final moments here in this present world as we know it they are no longer occupying that human body that they were given so therefore they are in transition okay or they make the transition and that is defined as pass away or to bring to a point where they cut off from living in this present world which is known as Gaza just like the Gaza Strip in Israel is a cutoff point it's the cutoff between Israel and the Hamite okay uh, Gaza a primitive root compare Gaza's or properly to shear off but used only in the figuratively sense of passing rapidly it brings in to cut off uh, and then you can find that in your uh, Oxford Dictionary as well as find that in your Strong's Concordance so let's continue here that word Gaza to cut off is not the same as the evil meaning of to cut off the evil workers souls are cut off from this life and in the world to come so get the understanding people these individuals these Negroes Hebrew Israelites that cut off other people's lives they murdered females that's pregnant with their babies they murdered uh, their girlfriends families they murdered people uh, unmercifully um, because they wanted the stimulus check or they just snapped and lost them cool and um, because they couldn't have their way with this female they decide to murder her and murder the unborn baby and murder her family members I have you to know something today they have innocent blood on their hands okay and the innocent blood that's on their hands is the white gloves treatment to the gates of hell all right this is a really soul-searching brutal topic on today okay because some of us are related to these people that have passed on and some of us are related to these people that committed these crimes now these individuals are supposed to be executed publicly executed, destroyed, stoned to death because they are sowing a spirit of Esau and Cain among our people. Okay? So when it's time for them to depart from this world, the evil worker souls are cut off from this life and in the world to come. You see, the world that they go to is called hell. So let's see. When a person is passing away from this present world into the life after this earthly life, the natural body is no longer a physical host for the soul and spirit. The spirit of beasts all right, is Rawak Ha Bahama. Beasts do not have souls. Therefore, when they die, they are not under the judgment for heaven or hell. So don't try and put your animals in heaven. Or hell there is none the scripture describes there is a spirit okay there is a spirit for animals animals don't have souls they have spirits and their spirit is of an animal design and when the natural body of a beast die off from this earth that spirit is not brought before the judgment seat because the spirit of that animal it came from Yahweh it was never wicked the only way an animal is wicked they have to be taught to be that way so let's move on the spirit of people Rawak Hach La'am 
The spirit of people is attached to their souls. The soul that sins shall surely die. The souls of people. Napash, ha, ila, la'am. Souls are judged by Yahweh not spirits. Your soul is directly connected to your five senses. Your soul is connected to your ears, your smell, your eyes, your feelings or touch and taste. Your spirit is the spirit of man. All humanity comes from Adam's spirit. Your soul is assigned to that spirit. The souls of ancestors do not replicate into another human being. Understand this. Not that their spiritual work does not replicate. Okay? So the spirit of someone, of a family member, just like you've seen Elijah and Elisha in our scripture. Elijah was literally transitioned or transfigured into uh, um, eternity. He was taken up by the chariot of, of uh, angels, right? Chariot of fire of angels. They came down and taken him up, transitioned him. And uh, before he left, Elijah asked Elisha, what would you ask of me before I depart from you? And Elisha asked for a double portion of Elijah's spirit, okay? His anointing, his divine body of work. So therefore, he said, if you see me when I depart from here, then so be it. So therefore, uh, Elijah, when he took on his heavenly body and he was taken into his rest, well, Elisha received the double portion of Elijah's spirit or his anointing. Okay, so that could replicate upon you. However, their soul will never replicate upon you. All right. The soul is the one thing that you have that will always be under judgment. It's your built in recorder it records everything. OK. And it's recording whether or not you resist the attack of the enemy when he's trying to tempt you and challenge you with all manner of wickedness. It's up to you and your soul to resist him. When a person is leaving this life as we know it, they go through a process known as metamorphosis, transition, last breaths. They pass on or they pass away or Gaza. The soul of that person will never occupy that natural body anymore without a resurrection. When a wicked person leaves this natural world for good, they will see the ruler of the darkness of this world. Here comes the son of perdition. He's the ruler of the darkness of this world. We know as the grim reaper. And then the death angel. Okay. The death angel is not the son of perdition. The death angel is the employee for Yahweh Allah to remove the soul. He separates your soul. He disconnects your soul from your natural body. He is... The, he's the divine mortician, okay? The death angel, when he comes in the midst, all right, he removes the life out of the body. The soul departs from that body. So that is the reason why the person goes through what is called their last breaths, okay? They breathe their last few times, and then they depart from this life as we know it, all right? Because... Yahweh Lahayim is life. Yahweh is life. Yahweh Shai Hamash Yak, he is life. Ruach Hakwadash, he is life. And he they, they 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 do not have death. There's no death in Yahweh. There's no death in Yahweh Shai Hamash Yak. There's no death in Ruach Hakwadash. When you lie to Ruach Hakwadash, the death angel will or lie on Ruach Hakwadash, the death angel will remove you from this present world. Documented in scripture, yet documented in this present time. So the son of perdition is not the angel of death. So don't get it mixed up. All right. The son of perdition, the son of destruction, the destroyer. He is not the angel of death. 
Two separate operations, people mix them up and think that they both are one and the same. They're not the same. Okay? If Yahweh Allah touch you, if Yahweh Shai touches you, Rawah HaKadosh, if he touches you, you cannot die because they are they are they are life. <laughs> so there has to be a mediator for death to remove your soul from this present world and package you up and prepare you for the next part of life, which is the world to come. Okay, now they that are wicked, okay, they that are wicked, they are not packaged up. Their soul is not packaged up and put to rest and they're sleeping and they are waiting for that great day to be awakened. That's not for the wicked, okay? When the angel of death comes for the wicked, okay, he's the direct employee for Yahweh he disconnects your soul from this present world. The grim reaper, the son of perdition, he taunt and antagonizes the souls of the wicked while on their deathbeds separating from this life. He also gives them the white gloves treatment and a personal escort service into the gates of hell. No, many people don't believe that. But when you learn what the scripture says and you understand what is written in context in scripture you'll understand this is fact because some of you have actually seen this happen among your loved ones and or other people all right you see when the wicked souls are departing from this present world they will not leave here peacefully they will hog kick and squeal they will wrestle and fight and plead many of them scream and holler why do they do that they have a front row seat to see where they are going to live forever that's why they get to see the front row the front door the main entrance into hell they get to smell burning sulfur they get to be in a heat in a temperature that's so hot, just like the scripture says, it never quench. They feel as though they are melting away, but never melt. They get to hear other wicked ones down there in the belly of hell, right along with them. They are doing just what Yahweh Shai said. They are weeping and gnashing of teeth. Okay, this is not fake. This is real. It really happens. And if it didn't really happen, then uh, why would people scream and holler before they leave from this present world while they're on their deathbed or when they have been uh, injured unto death and they don't want to leave here? They get to see Hashatan face to face. And when they see him face to face, he and they are trying to stay here and they're trying to resist going into the gates of hell. He just gives them the white gloves treatment. He shoves them in their back. He holds them by their armpits. You know how it is. He holds them by, by their armpits, put his knee in their back and shoves them right on into the pits of hell, right where he tricked them into because they've been living wicked and law breaking lives for a long time and never repented and did not desire to repent and they help other people become wicked so therefore when they leave here there is no resting place for them there is torture and torment for them okay the torture when someone who is actually a wicked one when they depart from here that torture and the screaming and the weeping and the hatred and the misery and the pain the hotter than hot, they get to feel that instantly because their new home is not the cemetery. The body goes into the cemetery, but the actual soul is not at rest. That soul is down in the belly of hell. They are on instant replay. They get to see all of the evil and wicked things they have done all of their lives while living in this present world. Their consciousness will be on replay until Yahweh Shai Hamashiach calls for the judgment day. What does that mean? That means if they've been touching children, 
They've been destroying lives of little babies. They've been murdering people, thinking they're getting away with it. Okay? They've been doing the worst of things, sacrificing babies and sacrificing people, drinking blood, shedding blood, doing all manner of the pits of evil, and never repent. Okay? Never turn back to Yahweh Shai Hamashiach and repent for the evil that they've done. Well, they have a personal seat in hell, and their consciousness is wide open to them when they depart from here. When you ask to die, when you keep saying, I'm ready to die, I want to be, you know, you, you, because you've been so evil, okay, you've been destroying females, you're a you so-called man, but you've been raping females. You've been forcing yourself on females. You've been tampering with little boys. You've been doing all these wicked things. But guess what? Your consciousness is going to be on replay in hell instantly. So when you depart from this life and you take the last breath, you that last breath while you fight and trying not to leave here, well, guess what? There's going to be instant replay on just like they have in the sports arena. You're going to see your acts of wickedness over and over and over until judgment day. Yeah, that's called torment. That's torture. You can't block it out. It doesn't go anywhere. Okay? That's how this works. The natural body returns back to the ground where it came from. But the soul lives on in eternal torture. They are the walking dead. You see, a lot of people, our pe many of our people right now, they love to entertain the souls of the dead. The walking dead, the ones that are so-called family members and dead ancestors. They love to summon those spirits or those souls of them because they are yet in torment. They're not dead as you think they are. The body is dead, but they are disembodied from that natural body. But their soul is yet alive and wide awake. I don't recommend that you try it, but we have people that do it. And that's the reason why many of these people, especially what you've seen in that video, some of these no good Negroes, they've been entertaining these demonic spirits. They've been summoning these demonic spirits. You see, those souls, the wicked souls, they always desire to return to this present world because they're disembodied. They know they can never come back. So the only way to come back is to have a host. And the only way to get a host is to play on someone's mind. Hashitan will play on the next person's mind. Okay? And he'll just keep working on them and working on them until they give in and try to entertain the souls of those dead, wicked ones. That's not good, people. The scripture says there's one that speaketh from the ground. That ain't good. We don't need to be hearing anyone speaking from the ground, meaning speaking from hell. Okay? So let me appreciate you at this time. Thank you for tuning in. The Water Rabbah. Thank you for tuning into the podcast on this hour. We ask you that you continue to listen in to our podcast. I know they're not all day, every day, like many are broadcasting out there. But when we do, when I post my uh, podcast lessons these are sermons that are already given to me that i uh, type up and build into powerpoint um sometimes i just put them out at different various times when yahweh moved upon me and says i want you to record this or i want you to put this one out i want you to share this with the people um the time has come for this message to be put out on the uh, social media platforms but these messages are already taught and ministered at our temple um, I've already uh, ministered these lessons so if I were you I would uh, you know some way somehow try to tune into our Facebook uh, page uh, our gates of heaven Facebook page where we are live and these lessons come forth and or you can attend the temple You're more than welcome all right so let's continue let's move forward Again, it's the water robot. Appreciate you for tuning in. So let's see what happens with the wicked souls. Let's see, let, let's get some questions going here. We got a question that says, are the wicked dead souls able to be seen as themselves? Yes, they do see themselves. They're not seeing themselves as somebody else or another. 
um, being. They see themselves as themselves, who they were when they were here. And they get to see that instant replay all day and night. There is no day and night. It's just night. All night, they don't have any sunlight. It's just heat, fervent heat, and they get to see themselves in their wickedness continually. The next question, are the wicked dead souls allowed to speak? Yes, they are, but not to us unless we summon them. Okay. They're, the next question is, are the wicked dead souls allowed to touch your flesh? No, they are no longer in the physical realm. You could hear their voices, possibly see their tormented souls. Okay. What does that mean? You know, you heard you know, uh, voices speaking and you thought it was that, that, that dead ancestor or that dead loved one, that wicked one speaking to you. Okay. So yeah, they can speak. They can try and send a message, but guess what? Hashitan is the one who's the imitator. He's the mocker. So he's, he's actually using their voice, using their imagery to speak to you. So, yeah, this stuff does happen. These things do come forth in people. Okay. The next question. Is it good to summon them or invite them into my presence? No, they are speaking from the ground or the underworld. I highly recommend you do not summon the souls of your ancestors or your so-called loved ones that was wicked and passed on. You can't summon the souls of your righteous ancestors because they're not going to answer you. And if you do try that, you are seriously going to hell, just like Saul. OK, um, you can study Saul and the witch of Endor and you will get a full understanding of what happened when you try and summon the spirit or the souls of the righteous. It's not a good thing. The results are not good. OK, and it's definitely not good summoning the souls of the wicked ones either. <laughs> All right. The next question. What if I call on my dead father or mother or closest relative? Answer. None of this behavior is good, according to the law of Yahweh and the prophets. That's fact as written in the scripture. It's not good to do that. The next question. What if they had a message for me before they died? I really need to know what they was planning to say to me. If you really need to know, here's the answer. If you really need to know what they had to say to you, they would have stayed here and waited until you received their message. It's just that simple. They would not have died. It would not have passed on. It would not have been cut off. All right. They would not leave here until you received that message from them. The only way. Let's get into some more dissertation. The only way to really give the souls of wicked a portal to communicate with human beings. There must be a active blood from this world used as a conduit to energize the portal for the dead soul to come up from the underworld. Let me say that again. In order for you to bring up the soul of another being, another person, okay, who's passed on, who's no longer here, that soul is cut off from here. In order for you to bring that soul up from the underworld, you must use active blood from this present world as a conduit, okay, to energize the portal for the dead soul to come up from the underworld because they cannot come back without living blood. Y'all get it? This is written in the scripture. I know you don't really hear preachers in mores and doctors and teachers and elders and apostles and these you know quote unquote the kindness community they don't talk about the scripture like this but this is scripture it's written in the scripture the ninth chapter of genesis 
You can go to the ninth chapter of Genesis and you can get the message directly from Yahweh when he spoke to Noah and his three sons and he commanded them to understand that the blood is the life of the body and anyone who sheds another man's blood their blood must be accounted for with their blood if you shed the blood of animals and you're not sacrificing the animal unto Yahweh you're just out there massacring animals well the blood of those animals is on your hands as well all right, because the blood is the life of the body. The blood is the gateway to open the portal of dead souls. Okay, it's not funny. A lot of people do try to play that game and they like to entertain the souls of the dead ones, the wicked souls, but that's not healthy. Okay, you see, wicked souls are cut off from this earthly life. They will never regain or come back to life. Why? They refuse to repent after they learned about Yahweh laws. This is the other side that many people hate to discuss. You never or ever or rarely hear about what's really going on on that side where the beast, the enemy really is. You don't know or you never really hear the discussion about what happens when the ancestor is passed on. When their soul, the wicked, no good relatives, when they pass on, when the wicked, no good people that you know, when they pass on, when they're cut off, you don't want to know, you don't want to hear about what's really going on with them after they depart from here. Yeah, you need to know because if you follow the, what they have done, then you'll end up going to the same place. We don't need to have any more of our people going to the pits of hell than that's already scheduled to be there. Okay? You see, this is also what we know as reality. We are in the last times, last days, end times. There are no seals open, nor trumps blowing right now. Okay? The scripture says it's time to cry loud and spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet in Zion. That's all we're doing right now is lifting up our voices like a trumpet. But there is no trump blowing from heaven that's waking up the dead or waking up data that are asleep. Those trumps and the seals of the book of Revelation, okay, that John was speaking about, that stuff is not happening yet. It's on its way. It's closer than it's ever been because the time of Jacob's trouble must be manifest before judgment day, before resurrection, before Yahweh Shai returns. Okay? This must come forth. You see, the son of perdition or the son of destruction, he's the one who's working right now. Got people fooled into believing that um, the trumps are blowing and the seals are open. No, 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 no. That's not what's happening right now. There's some things that are preparing for that to happen. Okay? And if I were you, I would prepare myself for when these things do happen. You do not find yourself in the realm of the spirits with the evil ones. Okay? So in the book of Hebrews, the 10th chapter, 35th through the 39th verse, it says, Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which you have great recompense of reward. You get paid back. You get rewarded for what's going on in this hour. For you have no need, or well, I'm sorry, you, you have need of patience that after you have done the will of Yahweh, you might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto Shak Yah, which is perdition, destruction, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. So get the understanding. Once you become a believer, once you follow through and you say, I'm no longer following the ways of the wicked. I desire to follow the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Allah There's no reason for you to desire to want to be in the belly of hell because to follow his word, to follow his law, statutes, and commandments is life. And he said, all you got to do is keep my commandments and live. Okay. Now the next part. This part of cutting off. 
okay? This cutoff is not the same as a transition. This part of cutoff is a point or a level which is a designated limit of something. Yeah, the lease on life is a designated limit. That is the reason why the wicked ones, when they are disconnected from this present world, it's not pretty. It's not fun. They don't just get to go to sleep and that's it. They don't just get to have last smooth breaths and leave here. That's not how it works when the wicked are cut off. Okay? You see, this is an act of stopping or interrupting the supply of something, which we know is the blood supply. A shortcut. According to the Oxford Dictionary, this is what cut off means, especially for this wicked one. Okay, when you have wicked people like these guys, these Negroes that murdered these people because of stimulus checks and whatever other reasons they have to be out here being some wicked satanic beings, murdering people, murdering their own people. Well, guess what? The time is going to come when they will be cut off. And when they're being cut off, there is no sympathy. There's no mercy. Okay, their family members should not have any sympathy or mercy for them because they perform acts of lewd wickedness and satanic uh, um, bodies of work in this present world. So when they leave here, the death angel comes and cut them short, cut them off abruptly. And when he cuts them abruptly, they feel the snatch of their soul departing from that body. And that's when they begin to scream and holler and the death angel, he hands that soul over to the white gloves treatment of Hashitan. And Hashitan gives them a, a, a good ushering into the gates of hell. That's how it works, people. That's what's going on in the underworld. Okay? So that word cut off is karath. Karath. It's called the death of the wicked. Typically a violent departure from this present world. Yeah, because they're fighting trying to stay here because they can they get to see, smell, taste, and hear, right? Their consciousness is fully aware of what's going on in the pits of hell. So that word cut off for the wicked is karath. Ka ra and tha. Karath. The ancient Hebrew is Ka, Ra, and Tha. Ka, Ra. Ka. All right. So let's write this on the screen here. So when we're dealing with Ka, Ra, okay. Ka, Ra, and Tha. And then we put the connector at the bottom. Karath. All right. Karath. That is the cutoff or the death of the wicked. No longer here. They will never come back. Okay. Second Esdras. The seventh chapter. 67 through 71. And he says this. But what does it profit us that we will be preserved only to be tortured with torments? All who are born are mixed up with violations, full of sins, and weighed down with crimes. If we were not to come into judgment after death, it would perhaps have been better for us. All right. What you have to do is understand that Ezra, this Esdras is also Ezra who wrote the book of Ezra. Um, you have to understand that there are no people, there's not one human being born into this world that is born a sinner, okay? And you have to get understanding. You're born into this world where there is sin, right? And you're shaped in iniquity, meaning you learn how to be a sinner. After a few days, you're full of troubles. And that's what Ezra was edifying here. He said, we're born first, and then we're mixed up with violations, Meaning that you wasn't born mixed up. You wasn't born delusional of, with sin. He says, full of sin and weighted down with crimes. This is after your birth. 
This is after you get mixed up with violations. You have to learn how to be a sinner. See that? So, Eliawan, the Most High, he replied. He said, when Eliawan made the world and Adam and all who are descended from him, he first prepared the judgment and the things that pertain to the judgment. Now, understand on the basis of your own words, because you said consciousness grows with us. Okay, this is a conversation he had with Yahweh So the next part says, those who sojourn on earth will be tormented precisely because although they were aware, they committed violations. You see, you cannot be born a sinner not knowing what sin is all about. You have to learn how to commit sin. You have to learn how to be a violator. Okay, although they received the commandments. They didn't keep them. When they did follow the law, they falsified its contents. What will they have to say in the judgment? How will they respond in the last times? How long a time Eliawan has put up with those who inhabit the world? But this wasn't for their sakes. Rather, for the sake of the schedule that he has established for the unfolding of times.